Hello, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Dina, and today we are going to unbox a Protocol Slipstream RC Quadcopter Stunt Drone. My cousins gave me this for my birthday recently, and I thought we should unbox it on camera before we um, test it out. So let's read a little bit about this. The Slipstream RC quadcopter is, ca is as capable as they come. It's built for rock solid control indoors and out. That translates to unparalleled precision maneuvers, including banked turns and 360 flips in all four directions. Plus, with built-in 6-axis gyro, it's fully toss and launch capable. The reliable 2.4 gig transmitter provides clear wide area reception, even when there are multiple copters in the air. So test your limits, or fly right past them. Um, it's funny what they say about um, multiple copters in the air. Originally, for Christmas, I had planned to by my brother, um, a mini drone, um, even smaller than this one. I think they're about um, this big. Um, but for some reason, uh, my order didn't go through with Amazon, and by the time it was supposed to arrive on the 23rd, uh, it was a bit too late to reorder it. So I guess we'll just have to uh, play with this one. <laughs> I did not know I was getting one, so. Um, once I saw this on uh, my birthday, I was like, oh, how, how funny. Matthew's gonna get one, and then we can have a uh, drone battle. That was why originally I waited to open it, but um, since that one never came, <laughs> I guess we'll just have to share this one for now. The features, it maneuvers up, down, forward, backward, right, left, and side to side has banked turns and four-way 360 flips, two selectable speeds, a six-axis motion-sensitive auto-stabilizers, auto controllable up to 150 feet with an asterisk, control range may vary within environmental conditions, 2.4 gig remote, crash-resistant materials, crash resistant materials, recharges directly through provided USB cord, remote requires three AAA batteries not included. Luckily, I do have quite a few batteries. Box includes the drone, a remote, charging cord, instruction manual, spare parts like replacement blades, screwdriver and blade pliers. Hmm, blade pliers, that's interesting. And it has a removable snap-on blade guard. So I guess that's what these guys are. So the um, blades don't uh, break off if this bumps into stuff. <laughs> That's about all the info I guess they have on the outside. So let's open this up.
So here you can see the um, little quadcopter itself. <laughs> it's a nice uh, silver and blue theme. And here are the joystick controller type of things peeking through. Here on the back side we have Conus winged guards, or propeller guards I suppose. Put those over here. We have some spare parts and a charging cable, as well as some instructions. Four channel radio controlled mini quadcopter. And here is the remote control. Oops. It's kind of a attached to the bottom there. Hmm. It's quite difficult to get out gracefully. That wasn't too bad. just release the drone. <laughs> Has these little uh, ties on it. It feels very uh, delicate. <laughs> Let me have a closer look. So here is the controller. This one seems to only want to go up and down. Doesn't really stay in the middle like this one does. It does return to the middle when pushed to the side, however. Oh, maybe. Hmm. But not to the side. Hmm. Okay then. We have a couple different buttons also. There's like an on-off switch. Uh, plus and minus. I'm not sure what that's for. And then three... Are those buttons actually? I don't think so. And then a little LED. Four channel protocol. We also have a little uh, 22.4 uh, gigahertz little thing there. feels pretty nice in the hand. It's like, um, I don't know, similar to a PS3 controller, but like, my fingers here are more spread out, and obviously my hands are up a lot higher, like that. Feels like it'll be fun to fly though. Okay, let's take a look at these instructions. Oh. First up, we have a little 25% uh, off spare parts kits. Here are the spare parts, by the way. There's a little uh, safety first, precautionary safety warnings. To prevent damage to people or property, 
Always avoid contact with other objects while in flight. Inspect aircraft prior, uh, prior to each flight and do not fly if damaged. Never expose product or any of its electronic parts to moisture, water, or heat sources. Charge device in a cool, dry place under adult supervision. Never leave the device unattended while charging. To prevent overheating, allow battery to have a cool down period before recharging. Use only the charger and the, or the charging cable that is supplied with this item. Do not strike, cut, or pierce the internal battery or subject it to hard impacts. Do not mix old and new batteries or mix new types of batteries. Never attempt to modify function of vehicle or controller or attempt repairs using parts other than those supplied by protocol. Spare parts are available at protocolnewyork.com. Okay, so let's see how we get this going. So I guess those aren't actually buttons. There's a power switch, speed switch, forward, backward. So this is forward, backward, left, right, direction stick for banking, and a flip button. So I guess if I press this down, oh, it'll do a flip. That's pretty cool. And then this is the throttle, left and right direction stick as well. Power indicator, um, so it'll be normally be red and when it flashes slowly we are low on battery. Um, so I'm going to need three batteries for this guy. Uh, yeah. You can see here it has um, four motors, one at each of the uh, propellers there. And it looks like the top and bottom actually can come apart. Hmm. They uh, recommend that you keep the quadcopter at a distance of at least two meters from yourself, others, and obstacles to prevent damage. Children should operate the quadcopter only under adult supervision. Well, good thing I am an adult. So here you can see the little cover there. Um, as for maintenance, it says to clean the quadcopter with a clean, soft cloth. Do not leave it in sun or bright light. Do not expose it to moisture or water. Regularly check connections and other parts. If you find any defective part, stop flying until the repair. There's a little um, pre-flight note here. Plug the cable into the socket on the slipstream and place it on a flat surface to allow for calibration. Slide the power switch on. Move both the throttle and direction stick to the lower left and lower right, respectively. The LED light on the slipstream will flash, indicating it is synced. So here are some more details about how it is controlled. So you move the left stick to the right to turn right. Move it to the left to turn left. Move the left, st left stick forward to go up. Move it down to go down. Move the right stick to the left to bank left. And then to the right to bank right. Move the right stick forward to go forward. And backward to go backward. Note, while fine tuning flight characteristics, maintain constant position and altitude. And here it says tips on 3D stunt and tumbling operation. Once you are familiar with the basics of quadcopter flight, you can try some advanced maneuvers. At a height of at least 10 feet, press the right direction stick once and you will hear a beep twice. Then move, it, move the right stick in whichever direction desired to perform a 360 degree flip in that direction. Hmm. After the flip, the slipstream will then restore to default status. So here's a right flip, and we'll go like that, otherwise this way, and a front flip, and 
<laughs> also has some little troubleshooting things here in case it doesn't respond or the response to control inputs are intermittent or erratic. The slipstream will not hover or strafe correctly. That's another problem that could happen. Most of the time, it's just uh, resynchronizing issues. Though this one, um, you might have to replace the batteries or repair the antenna. It also has a little note here. If the slipstream and the remote do not sync after following the pre-flight checklist, reverse the first two steps of the process. Turn the remote off and unplug the cable from the slipstream. Then turn on the remote first and plug the cable back into the slipstream to turn it on. Follow with step three. Turn on the controller. If after 30 seconds it does not recognize the helicopter, turn off the controller to retry synchronization. If the slipstream is unsteady in flight, it may not have been able to calibrate horizontally. Power down both vehicle and remote to restart the pre-flight procedure. So here it talks about um, charging the quadcopter's onboard battery. Unplug the charging cable from the aircraft canopy. Connect this to the supplied USB charging cable. Insert the USB end of the charging cable into the USB port of any computer or USB port power adapter to begin charging the aircraft. The red LED indicator will be off during charging and will go on when the charging cycle has completed. Once fully charged, plug the charging cable back into the canopy. The aircraft is now powered on. 50 minutes of charging yields 6 to 8 minutes of flight. When using a computer USB port as power source, remember to unplug the USB cable prior to shutting down the computer. Take care to insert the charging cable in the correct orientation, as reversing the polarity may lead to malfunction. I would imagine so. And then it notes, the slipstream uses a 3.7 volt, 250 mega milliamp. I assume that's milliamp. I'm not sure why they capitalized that M there. Lithium powered battery. Just some uh, little cautions um, while you're charging the battery. Most are uh, common sense, I would hope. Like, don't stick it on a space heater. <laughs> don't leave it on for an extended amount of time. So, yeah. It also suggests that you charge the battery to approximately 55% capacity prior to long-term storage. <laughs> I mean, that's a very specific amount there. And um, to, in order to increase battery longevity, avoid repeat charging and excessive dischar discharging. So I guess, um, Instead of letting it completely drain every time, they uh, suggest that you play with it for just a few minutes and then let it charge back up, I guess. So that's about it for this side of the instructions. Here's the um, charging cable, so just plug it in right here to this guy, I guess. So it looks like um, during charging you'll connect it to this one, and then in flight these two will connect to each other to power it. Here's the bottom. I suppose I should uh, take that sticker off, huh? There we go. So, um, I guess there's nothing left to do but charge it up and take it for a little test flight. Um, I'm only going to include a little bit of the test flight footage right here. But if you'd like to see a full video of um, us trying it out, I'm going to go ahead and leave a link. Otherwise, I'm just going to make some 
traditional ASMR style noises until the end of the video like usual. Hope you liked this unboxing, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!